you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. It was the day no one would ever forget. Not next week, next year, or the year after. Not for the rest of their lives. No matter how hard they tried. All in? Yes. Yes. And? Yes, Daddy. <sighs> good. That's good, then. Seatbelts, everybody. Where are we going now? Home. Oh. Unless... anyone wants to stop for ice cream. Can we? If you like. I think your mother would approve. Don't you? Well... I guess so. What about you, Anne? I want to go home. I... I'm kind of tired. M me too. Very well then. Some other time. Dad? Yes? I was wondering. What, Tom? Well, when they closed the... the... Casket? Are you sure they closed it real, real tight? So she would never be wet or cold or anything? You don't have to worry, son. She's resting now. In a much better place. I promise. It was the week the world ended. And yet, incredibly, it was also the week something new, something truly fantastic, began. Anne, are you in here? You're supposed to knock. This is my room, too. I'm going to bed. In the middle of the day? It's cold. Tell Daddy to turn on the heater. It is on. It's warmer downstairs. Who's that? Thank you for stopping by. The children need me. Come in. Nice of you to... The time? It's Aunt Clara. We know. Is she here to take us away? Let's go listen. I'll see about a sitter first thing tomorrow. They need more than that. <laughs> a maid as well. And when you work late? They'll be in school most of the day. And what about after school? And who will see that they're dressed and fed every morning? A live-in maid then. Ugh, maids and sitters never work out. Beyond intolerable, everyone. I'll do everything I can for them, Clara. It's not enough. They need a woman's touch. George, I'm going to tell you this once. Babysitters and nursemaids are not the same as parental care. It's been a week since their mother died, and little Anne is more withdrawn every day. Can't you see? She's miserably unhappy. And it's only going to get worse. You're right about Anne. But Tom and Karen seem to be adjusting. No oh, nonsense. They're only covering up. They're sad, lost children. They have no anchor now. It's going to take time, Clara. Well, that's all well and good. But how much time? This is ridiculous. I know my own children. Do you? Clara, please! Daddy. Now you've upset the children. <gasps> there they are! How long have you been listening? We were on our way out to play a game, weren't we, Tom? Yeah, uh, we were just... Oh, come to me, my dears. No. Anne. Anne, please, please don't run away. Uh, I, sh I should explain. Your father and I were having a talk, a very important one, and I told him I'm not pleased with the way things have been in this house since your mother died. But, I have some good news. How would you like to come and live with me for a while? Well, how does that sound? Um, we're okay here. School starts next week and everything. Let us talk it over among ourselves. In private. Is that your final word? I'm afraid it has to be. 
In that case, you'll hear from me, George. You can rely on that, and the next time it may be in the form of legal papers. No doubt. My only concern is what's best for the children. Goodbye for now. Oh, you precious dears. She wants to take us away. Does she, Daddy? She doesn't approve. She says I'm too busy to bring you up properly. That's not true. Perhaps it is. I can't stay home from work forever. She says you're unhappy here, are you? No. -uh. no. <laughs> well, if love were enough, you'd have all you need because I couldn't love you more. Perhaps I can find the right help, the, the right guidance. Someone who'll be here all the time, someone who cares. But where? Where do I advertise for that? Wanted. One loyal, gentle soul will always... Dad. Hmm? Look at this. W what do you have there? Modern Science Magazine? It came in the mail. There's an ad in the back. It says... Let me see. There. I sing the body electric. What does that mean? A line from a poem by Walt Whitman, as I recall. Keep reading. Fantacini Limited. Huh? It's the name of the company. Inventors and makers of electrical shadows, effigies, mimics, and mannequins. We bring you the answer to all your needs. That's stupid. <laughs> the first perfect micro-circuited auto-recharging Model Mark V electronic data processing device in humanoid form. Like a robot. Built with precision, designed to accommodate any problem, large or small. Worried about finding the right housekeeper, personal assistant, secretary? Whether you require a teacher, friend, or companion, the Model Mark V will listen, interact, and learn, adapting perfectly to your requirements. A lifetime warranty. It never breaks down. There's no such thing. In male or female form, fully customized, satisfaction guaranteed. Did you hear that? Satisfaction guaranteed. It's a crazy idea. Let's not talk about it now. Well, we need to do something. I said that's enough. Besides, anything they built has got to be better than Aunt Clara. Doesn't it? <laughs> sure does. <laughs> oh, that was a good one, Tom. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been since we laughed. It even says there's a free trial period. Well? Well what? It sounds okay, but can they really make a machine that looks like a person? I don't know. It doesn't sound okay to me. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to pay them a visit. See what they're up to. No harm in that. I sing the body electric. It has a nice ring to it. They make a fairly convincing pitch in the pages of a magazine called Modern Science. The revelation is just how modern, for robots, androids, and the like aren't science fiction anymore. They are products designed to help people, to make life easier. It doesn't seem possible, though, to find a woman who can fill the needs of this particular family, who must be ten times better than mother in order to be half as good. Except, of course, in the Twilight Zone. There's the sign. Fan... Fan... To... Fantacini. Why do they call it that? Who cares? We'll have to ask. As soon as I find a parking space... <sighs> okay. Can I ring the doorbell? You always get to do everything. Now, now. Your brother found the ad. Wow, some bell, huh? Won't you come in, Mr. Simmons? We've been expecting you. You have? I called ahead for an appointment. Feel free to browse the showroom. I'll be right with you. Wow, this is incredible. 
Look. What's that supposed to be? A whole table full of marbles? Uh, I don't think so, son. More like glass eyes. Wow. Blue and brown and hazel and green. I want her to have eyes like this. Well, careful, J don't touch them. Oh, please do. Guido Fantoccini at your service. An unusual name. It's Italian, it means uh, roughly dream people, or as I prefer, shadow puppets. This is my daughter, Karen. Hello. And uh, don't tell me, Tom. And you must be Miss Ann Simmons, age 11, or is it 12? She's only- I'm going to be 11 next month. In that case, allow me to present you with this golden key. It's awful big. What's it for? To wind her up, of course. To wind what up? Why, your new, let me guess, nanny? Tutor? Oh, that and more, I'm afraid. The children lost their mother recently, and without anyone else at home... Nobody can take her place. Nobody. In that case, might I suggest our grandmother model? It's very popular. Do we have to wind her up every day? The key is symbolic, a way of introducing our product line. Um, what sort of product are we talking about? Uh, if you can be more specific. As specific as you like. The end result is entirely your choice. First, you'll select the eyes, any color at all. This color's perfect. Then you'll move on to the hair salon. Our wigs are of the finest quality. Blonde, brunette, brown, red, white, and every shade in between. I want her to have long hair, like this one. Ears, with or without earrings. Arms, slender or sturdy, graceful or strong. Hands, fingers, lips, full or thin. As for body type, the choice is again yours. Tall, short, the height you prefer to the millimeter. Very impressive. But they're just pieces. Until we put them all together at the factory, then they'll become something else, something new. They'll move and walk and talk. Machines don't talk. Grandmothers do. Listen. I sing the body electric. I celebrate myself and sing myself. Who's that? One I voice out of many electric. possibilities. I Try another. I celebrate myself and sing myself. I sing the body electric. I sing the body I celebrate electric. myself. I or another. I sing myself. And sing myself. I sing the body electric. I sing the body electric. I celebrate myself. I celebrate myself. I sing the body electric. I celebrate myself. I sing the body electric. I sing the body electric. I celebrate myself. Pick one. I sing the body electric. I celebrate myself and sing there. myself. I no, sing the body electric. that's not right. I celebrate too high, myself too low. and sing myself. Go ahead, turn the knob. I sing the body electric. I celebrate myself and sing myself. I sing the body Could electric. Could you make her just like my I mother? I celebrate myself if you wish. and sing myself. Exactly. I sing the body to electric. A T. I celebrate myself then, and sing myself. Then, I don't want her. Please, Anne. I want to leave. You've dropped the key. Wait. I sing the body electric. I celebrate myself and sing myself. I've I almost got it right. Electric. I, I celebrate myself and sing myself. I sing the body electric. I celebrate myself and sing myself. The armies of those I love engirth me and I engirth them. They will not let me off till I go with them, respond to them, and discorrupt them, and charge them full of the charge of the soul. Prima. Hey, Ann, you want to help me fly my kite? I'm reading. Where'd you get that? Dad bought it for me. Here, hold the string. I'll run till it gets up in the air and... What's wrong? He 
hear that? So? Somebody's coming. Maybe it's the mailman. No. Then who? Hello. Hi. You must be Thomas. Do they call you Tommy? Just Tom. Well, Tom, then. Is that your sister, Karen? Yes. That's Anne over there. Of course. Who are you? Well, give me any name you like. Melissa, Lavinia, Malvina. Do I know you? Well, don't you? I think I saw those eyes before. So did I. You must be... Yes? Grandma? Say it a few times. You'll get used to it. But I thought you were going to come in a big box, all wrapped up like a... Mummy. Yeah. Well, then I'd need an Egyptian name, wouldn't I? Like Nefertiti? Oh, Nefertiti's a fine name. Do you know what it means? I believe I do. It means the beautiful one is here. Well done! George Simmons. So, we meet at last. A pleasure, Mr. Simmons. Welcome to our home. You're not my grandmother. Anne. Well, then who am I, pray tell? Nobody. Just a machine. Well, she doesn't look like a machine. Ah, but I am. A very special one. How shall I prove it? Let me see. Have you ever been to the beach? Yes. Sure. And when you were there, did you pick up a shell and hold it to your ear? <laughs> Many times. What did you hear? The ocean. Yeah. Then, listen, I'll cut my hands together like this and hold them to your ear. Now, what do you hear? I want her to have long hair, like this one. That's my voice. All your wishes recorded. You too, Tom. This color's perfect. How did you do that? Well, you're a part of me now, stored in my circuits. Anne, what was it you said? I don't care. Well, it may take a while for that one. I'm not worried. Tom, what is that you're playing with? A kite. Oh, will it fly high? I think so. If I don't run out of string first. Well, what do you know? I happen to have some with me. Where? Touch the end of my finger. You have string in your finger? <laughs> if that's what you need. Now tie the end to your kite. Why don't you run with it, Anne? Go on. It won't fly. Oh, are you sure? Hold it over your head. Please, Anne. Give it a try. Well, if you want me to, Daddy. Hey, look at that. Mm. <laughs> Don't let go of the string. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. How high shall we fly? The moon. The moon it is. It's almost out of sight. What do you say? Thank you. Yes. Thanks very much. You're a great kite flyer. Now, what's my name? Grandma. Anne. Look at what Grandma did. And? I don't want to play. There was a second day, of course. And a third. And a fourth. With Grandma busy every minute. Cleaning and cooking. Opening the drapes wide filling the vases with fresh-cut flowers, baking cookies and pies, and leading long walks into town. But the most beautiful and special thing was the way she paid attention to everyone. She took time to listen, really listen, and remember every word, every thought, every wish, as if that were her only purpose. She seemed clever beyond clever, human beyond human, Anne finally began to join in, but slowly. To walk if not to run. To listen if not to hear. To watch if not to see. And as the days turned into weeks, Grandma waited. She never tried to urge or force. Sometimes, 
When Anne didn't come to the table, Grandma left dinner on a tray by her door. Big spoons first, then the little spoons. Is that right, Grandma? Perfect, Karen, dear. Is, is that your father home already? Yeah. You heard him before he got here. Daddy! Hello, sweetie. How was your day? Grandma taught me how to sew. Did she now? Good evening, Mr. Simmons. Dinner is almost ready. Well, looks like you have a helper. I made the mashed potatoes. Indeed, she did. I'm proud of you, Karen. Where's Anne? <laughs> She's upstairs doing her lessons. Anne! Come down and help your grandmother! Oh, it's all right. I can handle the rest. That's not the point. Dad, whose car is that out front? Hmm? Which one? The new one. Oh, well, uh, let me see. Oh, yes. It's ours. It is? I came home early to surprise you. Can we go for a ride? All of us? I don't see why not. We'll take a run to the ice cream parlor after dinner. How's that? Now, go and wash your hands and tell your sister dinner's ready. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for being so good to us. Good for us. And that includes me. I'm sorry about Anne. I'll have a talk with her. Now, don't you worry about Anne. She'll accept me eventually. You seem very sure. Mr. Simmons, children are the most complicated creatures in the world. I could be the greatest cook, the finest, most exciting playmate, the most interesting companion, but those are very small accomplishments. It's the heart I have to enter. A child's heart, it's a deep place, difficult to reach. But that, too, will come. Anne, darling. Are you hungry, dear? Not very. We're uh, going for a ride after dinner. In our new car. It's beautiful. Wait till you see it. I'd like you to go with us. Is she going? Oh, please, Grandma. I want to ride in the back seat with you. Me too. Then I'll stay home. But why, Anne? I don't like her. You mustn't say that. I don't want her here. Dear child. I never wanted you here. It was them, Father and Tom and Karen. They wanted you. They needed you. But I didn't. Anne, stop it. It's true. You sit and you talk to her and you eat the food she makes and you make believe, Father. That's what you do. You make believe, as if she's real. But she's not. She's a machine. Nothing but an old machine. Anne, listen to me. Machines are neither bad nor good. Some kill, and some make war, and some guide people through the darkness like a lamp. Believe me when I tell you, I cannot lie, or sin, or be greedy or jealous. I don't seek power or riches. I've been programmed for other things. You'd be surprised at how much a machine can do. This one, for example. This machine can love. Love who? Oh, you, Anne. I can love you. And I do. I love you more than... More than tongue can tell. You don't love me. You can't. She said she loved me. She? My mother. <gasps> she said I love you, but she lied. She lied. You're just like her. I hate you. I'll go after her. Not this time. There's no place for her to go. No place except to me. Anne, come home with me now. No, you're just old junk. Well, is that what you think? Is that why you hate me? You're just like her. Your mother. I hate her too. Because? Because she lied. She said she loved me. And didn't she? She ran away. Oh. Is that what you think? She did. Well, that's not true. It is. No. 
Death left her no choice. But she let herself die. She shouldn't have done that to me. She shouldn't. She left me. And do you think I'm like her? You are. You're only trying to trick me. Oh, it's not a trick. It is. I don't give you permission to love me. There she is. Anne, come back. No, I won't. I won't. It's red. Anne! No, child. You mustn't. There's a truck. Leave me alone. Then stay where you are. I'm coming. Anne, no! They're not moving. Either one of them. Don't touch them. I, I didn't see them, honest. I mean, they ran out into the street to... Little girl and stand back. A lady. Oh man. Uh, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna get an ambulance. Wait. She's moving. Anne. Oh, oh thank goodness. Daddy? You're going to be alright, darling. We better get her out off the street. Here, put your arms around my neck. Uh, uh, what happened? There was a truck. But grandma stepped in front and pushed you aside. She did? You fell down, that's all. Grandma. What about that lady? I mean, she's not breathing. Look, she's starting to move her fingers. And her eyes. Grandma, can you see me? Why, hello, Tom. You know, we really shouldn't be out in the intersection like this. Come over to the curb, Grandma. Can you walk? Of course I can. But how? See, Anne? She's perfectly all right. She saved your life. Do you realize that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shh. Now stop your tears, child, and listen while I cut my hands by your ear. Remember? Like this. A machine. Nothing but an old machine. You're just old junk. Old junk. That's my voice. Your voice, Anne. The way it was once. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Oh. Grandma? Grandma? There, there. You are alive. Well, I most certainly am. But the truck. It couldn't hurt me. Nothing can. Two leave-takings in one year would be too much. Then... then you're not like Mother. Your mother didn't run away. She was taken away by death. Do you understand now that I shall always be with you? You won't run away? Well, I can't. And I won't. Oh, Grandma. Thank you. You'll never know how much. She had nowhere to turn. She was afraid that everyone would leave her, even her Aunt Clara. Everyone except you. Well, how could I? It's my job to live forever. Now, let's all go home and finish our lunch, shall we? Give me your hand, Anne. You too, Karen. I'll bet we get there before those two. As of that moment, grandmother became an irreplaceable member of the family an integral part of their lives. She was more than important. She was vital, the very essence, the most crucial part of being alive. And she shared it all with them, without effort, as if it were what she was born to do. This is so good. Mm, delicious. Thank you. May I have some more, please? Well, if there's any left, I uh, may have had more than my share. I take it you approve, Mr. Simmons. Oh, please. I'd prefer it if you call me George. Clean your plates, all of you, or there'll be no dessert. That's enough for tonight. Tomorrow we'll read another chapter from Moby Dick by 
What's the author's name? Herman Melville. That's correct, Anne. Now, there's just enough time for your language lesson. Who can conjugate the verb to love in Latin? <laughs> Me! I can! Me! <laughs> She taught them better than any flesh and blood teacher, in a manner perfectly suited to their expanding minds, until learning became a hunger that would never be quenched. Grandma, are you asleep? Oh, you know better than that. Do you need something? Hot chocolate? A plate of cookies? It's the storm. They're scared of thunder. And you, Tom? Heck no. Oh, well. Come over here just the same. Everybody crawl into my bed. Mm. That's it. We'll weather this old storm together. They would never see lightning, never hear poetry, never listen to foreign tongues without thinking of her. Everything they would ever see, hear, taste, smell, and touch would remind them of her. She was all life to them, the source of the Nile. And all life became wondrous, quick and electric, like her. And one day, it came time for the inevitable, the unthinkable, the day of saying goodbye. Thank you for carrying my suitcase, Tom. Such a fine gentleman. It's the least I can do. The same suitcase you brought with you, how many years ago? Now, let's not get maudlin. Grandma, do you have to leave today? Oh yes, Karen, it's time. We're going to miss you. And I you, Anne. But why do you have to leave at all? You're going off to college now, and you won't need me. That's the way it should be. But you've been our world. I'm not the world. The world's out there, and it needs you. What happens to you now, Grandma? Oh, back to Mr. Fantaccini and the rest of the Pinocchios. He should have called himself Geppetto. Don't joke about it. Oh, but it's true. You've been my family here, and now I must go back to my first family. My brothers, sisters, aunts, cousins, all the other robots. And do what? Some stay at the factory. They're taken apart and recycled. Not you. Or perhaps I'll be returned and sent out to help another family like yours. They can't destroy you. I won't let them. Nor will I. Destroyed? Oh, what a silly expression. I'll go for a while to the room of voices. The room of what? Oh, a great dim room. A kind of parlor where all the other mechanical grandmothers are brought and stored for, oh, a month or a year. And in that room we'll sit and rock and murmur and whisper to each other. And we'll listen and tell what we learned from the world and from the families we lived with. I'll share what I learned from Anne and Karen and Tom and even you, George. You didn't learn anything from me. Oh, didn't I? Don't be so sure. But you taught us. <laughs> Is that what you think? Foolish lad. Why, now I have so much to share in the room of voices. Everything you ever said or did. Everything you ever laughed or cried about. And someday... Someday what, Grandma? For reasonable creatures, we have an unreasonable dream. Someday, if we're very wise and very good... Perhaps we'll gain the greatest gift of all. Oh, Grandma, you don't have to wait. You're alive now. You've always been alive to us. Ah, well, there's my cab. I'll get your case. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't hear of it. Grandma, am I never going to see you again? Well, the world holds many surprises. Someday, when you're very old, with childish ways again, in need of help, send for me, the old nurse, teacher, companion, and I'll come back. Hard to imagine. No, we'll never be old. <laughs> but then, you'll never come. I mean, 
If we don't, we won't ever... Do me a favor, would you? Anything. Go on upstairs. Ah, quickly now. I'm not one for goodbyes. <laughs> Grandma. There, there. Mind your grandmother. Quickly! She kept her word, as promised. She has remained with us always, to this day. I've saved the key, the golden key, in a special place. Sometimes, when lightning rends the sky, I see her face flash before me in the dark. And sometimes, I still hear her ticking and humming above our beds in the night, keeping watch. She passes like a clockwork ghost in the long halls of memory. The sound of bees swarming after the spirit of summer's lost. I remember the day no one will ever forget. Not for the rest of our lives. It was the week the world ended. And, incredibly, it was also the week that something new, something utterly fantastic, was about to begin. As of this moment, the wonderful electric grandmother moved into the lives of children and father. She became integral, important. She became of the essence. As of this moment, they would never see lightning, never hear poetry, never listen to foreign tongues spoken without thinking of her. Everything they would ever see, hear, taste, feel would remind them of her. She was all life, and all life was wondrous, quick, magical, and electrical like Grandma. A fable, most assuredly, but who's to say that at some distant moment there might not be an assembly line producing a gentle product in the form of a grandmother whose stock in trade is love. A fable, sure, but who's to say what's possible in the Twilight Zone? I Sing the Body Electric, starring Dee Wallace with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was written for The Twilight Zone by Ray Bradbury and adapted for radio by Dennis Etcherson. Heard in the cast were David Pasquese, Tony Marcus Jr., Donna J. Folks, Joe B. Cerny, Patrick Cerny, Haley Napig, C.J. Amari, Elena T. Wilson, Natalie Pear, and Zoe R. Rand. This copyrighted radio series is produced by Carl Amari and directed by Joe B. Cerny for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design, custom Foley effects, recording, and editing are done in the Cerny American Sound to Picture Theater by sound designers Craig Lee, Bob Benson, Todd Beyer, and Tim Cerny. Music for The Twilight Zone is provided by CBS and American Music Incorporated New York. To learn more about The Twilight Zone radio dramas and to download episodes, including three free episodes on our homepage, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking.